The Kia Forte is a pretty nimble car and it's available at a very competitive price point and it's feature loaded. Now, the one in behind me is the GT line of the vehicle. So you're pretty much looking at adding a few packages on if you're down in the States to make it equivalent to this, but we still do have this trim level available down there. Steve here, Cars with Steve. And before I dive into the Forte and explain everything you need to know, I wanna give Durham Kia a huge shout out and thanks for giving me access to this thing to shoot the video for you guys. You can find their contact information down in the description of the video. You can also find the build link for this vehicle and build links right off to Kia's website on top of that, which is kind of cool. Now, few things about the Forte. Strictly available front wheel drive and one big change from the 22 to the 23 model. In Canada, we no longer have the option for a manual transmission anymore, unfortunately. But down in the States, you guys still do have the option for the manual transmission when you look at the GT. So you've got the GT manual that's got a few differences between the automatic versus the manual. It is unfortunate that we lost that manual transmission in Canada, but at the same time, the computer's brain is going to be able to shift a little bit quicker than we can. So not necessarily a bad thing, but the overall styling inside of this thing is pretty nice. So let's dive in, unpack this thing and see what the 2023 Forte has to offer. Starting off towards the outside of the vehicle, along the side. So we do have that beautiful new Kia logo right in the middle of the rim and series of different rim choices and wheel sizes that are available, just depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. So we've got 15s, 16s, 17s, or 18s. You're gonna find the 18s when you get into the GT version of the vehicle. But I mean, the 17s still do look fairly aggressive, which is kind of nice. Now I did mention, inside of the Forte, you're strictly looking at front wheel drive. So we don't have all wheel drive as an option, unfortunately. But one interesting thing is that if you are looking for something all wheel drive, you can actually find the same two liter engine or the 1.6 turbo inside of the Kia Seltos. So that is available all wheel drive. So if that's something that's on your radar, you need to have it, look at the Seltos instead. It's an equally as impressive ride. You get a tiny little bit more space too in comparison to what's going on with the Forte. But one cool thing about the GT line and the GT, so we take a look at what's going on with that front bumper. You can see we've got this nice red highlight throughout parts of the front end and even in the grill. Well, that's kind of cool. It's like a two-tone part of the grill, which is really, really neat. So that top part, really love it. So it's those small highlights that make this thing pop that tiny little bit. And even looking at the headlamp, so we've got the option for either halogen or LEDs, depending on the trim of the vehicle that we're in, for daytime, nighttime lamps, etc. We've got our fog lamps down below, but the headlamps themselves, we've got this nice kind of like diamond texture running all the way through at the top. And then we've got this nice metallic highlight running all the way across the lamp into part of the bumper there as well, or into part of the grill, I should say. It looks really, really nice. We've got our new Kia badge right along the top of the hood there. And we've got a tiny, not a big one, like a tiny little splitter right in the front end. But I mean, it is nice. You could always go for different lips and things like that if you wanted to track this thing. It's possible, anything can happen. I do wanna say thank you so much for helping to support the channel. It's amazing to see how it's grown over the past two and a half, going on three years now. It's kind of wild thinking that it's been, I guess two and a half years amazing but it's been a lot of fun if you haven't subscribed already make sure you subscribe and i did also hide a gift card code somewhere in this video you're the first one to find it and claim it and it's yours let's get back to it now, getting underneath the hood of the forte super straightforward so we've got a release just to the left hand side of our pedals and then so just above the kia badge there, we're just going to slide our hand in and more towards the a little release off to the side and this is nice. Now, the Forte does technically have two different engine options that are available. We've got this as an option, and it's the two liter naturally aspirated, so non turbocharged engine. But power wise, this two liter engine can push out 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque, which is a respectable amount for a vehicle this size. But if power is something that you really, really like, and that's something that you're really pushing for, you do have the option for the 1.6 turbocharged instead. And the 1.6 turbo is gonna push you at a 201 horsepower, which is amazing. Like this thing is gonna go when you get that 1.6 turbo. So that one would be a little bit closer to like a track ready option. 
then you're gonna find it inside of the GT trim level of the vehicle. So not the GT line like this is, the GT, which is the highest available trim level. But it's gonna be a matter of preference. Do you really want that extra power or do you just want something to get you A to B with a good fuel economy all at the same time? Because if it is, this two liter has you covered. It's funny, I actually took a vehicle out to the East Coast recently and that thing has this two liter engine in it and the fuel economy on it was pretty good, but 5,000 kilometers in, what was it, 10 days? It was wild. If you wanna see that video, check down in the description below, but it was a heck of a lot of fun. But really nice taking a peek under the hood here. We can easily top up fluids, check change our oil, easy access to the battery all at the same time. And one key thing, I've been stressing it in a few of my videos lately, make sure you maintain your vehicle. Like it actually kind of blows my mind how many people skip oil changes, they skip routine maintenance, and they wonder why vehicles are giving them problems. It's because you're not maintaining it. That's all you have to make sure you do is maintain your vehicles. So take it in for regularly scheduled maintenance for a few different reasons. You wanna make sure that you're maintaining your manufacturer's warranty, but it's also peace of mind that you've got a vehicle that's going to last because you're maintaining it right. So at the end of the day, I do recommend just make sure you're at least doing your oil changes, but you do wanna make sure you're taking it in for regularly scheduled maintenance all at the same time. And now taking a peek along our driver's side door, we've got a little blind spot system there. So that's gonna highlight when somebody's into the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Moving backwards a tiny little bit, we do have our little intelligent access button, which is useful. So this one here, we can press it if we wanna either be able to lock or unlock the doors as long as we've got the key fob on us. But hopping inside, really nice look, but starting off on the door here, we've got this like nice stitching, look at this follows all the way throughout the door. Really, really nice look. Different as we get through the steering wheel. And then we've got that nice stitching that follows all the way throughout the driver's seat. Now, this is the GT line of the vehicle, but we do have our GT line badge. Would look slightly different when in the regular GT and then some of the other trims of the vehicle. But back out to the side. So we do have this nice glossy highlight that follows all the way throughout the door there. And along the door, a series of different buttons that are available. So we can adjust what's going on with our side view mirrors, unlock and lock, window up and down, kill off power to those rear windows, a little storage cubby, storage cubby down there as well. Moving inside, so along the driver's seat there, you can see we've got a series of different buttons. So we can bring the seat forwards, backwards, up and down. We can adjust our backrest there very simply. We've also got two-way lumbar support. So the controls that you see here are gonna be dependent on which Forte model you've got. This is the GT line. So we do have different options to get these, these power adjusting seats inside of the majority of the trim levels of the vehicle. As we hop over, got a series of different buttons here. So we can either increase or decrease what's going on with the brightness of the cluster screen. We can turn our blind spot system on off, turn our traction control system on or off. We've got a manual telescoping steering wheel. And then down below, we also do have the release if we ever need to get underneath the hood. Two pedals here because we're in the automatic. And then obviously if you are in the manual, you'd have the clutch just off to the side there. But we've got nice pedals, nice metallic look all the way throughout there, which is really nice. All right. <laughs> this is pretty nice. So this is the GT line version of the vehicle. So the seats themselves, are actually pretty dang comfortable. Hello. We've got a little sunroof up overhead too, which is kind of nice. Not a full panoramic roof like we'll find in some other Kia vehicles, but it still is nice. We've got the roof available there as an option. I love it. Really cool. But we'll get to that one in a second. So these seats are actually fairly comfortable. Okay, so hold on. So I'm six feet tall, all right? And with the seat, like the seat goes so far back. So with the seat as far back as it'll go, with it as far down as it'll go, I've got three inches and change worth of headspace there. So I mean, like if you're 6'3", six, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you'll probably comfortably be able to sit inside of this thing. There is a ton of space here, which is crazy. Like with me, I would normally have it set up kind of like this. Nope, oh, back a bit. Yeah, so six feet tall, set up like this. I've still got what? Because this one has the sunroof, like two, like an inch, inch and a half roughly of headspace there. So tons of space, which is fantastic. 
Uh, we've got a series of different types of seats that are available inside of the Forte, cloth seats, synthetic seats, leather seats with inserts, etc. depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But the seat is really comfortable. And like having the option for heated ventilating the side of this thing, it is wild. So like this is the GT line in Canada and like the way it's specced out, $29,000 plus tax. Like that is crazy for the technology that you get inside of this thing. I would personally probably go for the GT instead because you get that beefier engine. But I mean, this thing is fairly loaded and featured packed as is. I love all of the different technology, the options that you're gonna find inside of this. But all of those nice highlights that are along the door. One interesting thing, I didn't notice because of how bright the light was when I was shooting the first part of the door, but we've got this, I don't know if it's actual carbon fiber, it might just be a wrap but we've got this nice look around the door. So that glossy highlight there, it's really sharp. I like it. But we've got our nice vents. We've got this nice metallic highlight following throughout the dash there as well. It's really sharp. Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Forte. So this is going to be a fully comprehensive look at how all of the different buttons work and moving through that cluster screen. So let's go for it. First thing I'm going to point out, the steering wheel itself is going to be a manual telescoping. So just by our left knee there, we do have a little release. We're just going to drop that down. And like I said, telescoping, so in, out, up and down as necessary. Once you've got that perfect position, you're going to click it, lock it back into place. Now, we've got two sticks, left and right side. Stick on the left-hand side. On the very tip of that, we can rotate it in order to adjust what's going on with our lights. I always just recommend keeping it in the auto setting. If you have fog lamps, we can also adjust that there. If you wanna use your high beams, we can flip in order to just kind of flash them, turn them on, or we can push away in order to turn it into the auto mode instead. So it's going to dim them if it recognizes an oncoming vehicle. Along the right hand side, that's going to be for our front windshield wipers. So we can kind of adjust out the speed from here, pull in towards us in order to get that front windshield wiper fluid going. So it's very straightforward. Now, the wheel itself might be heated, might not be heated, just depending on whether you're in Canada or the States and which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But I mean, it is nice, it wraps all the way around, super comfortable. One really cool thing, if I drop you down just a tiny little bit, we're in the GT line, but we do have a flat bottom steering wheel instead. So if you're taking your GT on the track, it's just easier to grip, turn, whatever the case may be. So it is kind of cool that the Forte has that on the steering wheel as a default. Really, really nice. Now, buttons along the left-hand side are gonna let us do a few things. So this one is gonna be our voice command prompt. So you can see there, so we've got our voice command prompt pulling up. So that's gonna let us do things like change songs, radio stations, we can navigate using our voice. If we were hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we could do a longer press and hold if we wanted to activate either our Siri or our Google Assistant. We've got two individual buttons here, so mode buttons. So what that's going to do is let us change between a few things. So we push that and we can select what we want it to do. Easiest thing just let it go through pretty much everything. So when you push this button, you're essentially changing out the mode for the music that you're listening to. From there, we can push this bottom button, and that's the same thing, going to let us do a few different things. When we press this button, what does it do? Does it end a call? Does it change it to privacy mode? Does it pull up our map, etc., which is kind of cool. So we have map selected now, so when we push that button, it pulls up our map instead. So you can customize what the buttons do to a degree. We can answer or hang up on a phone call, We've got our volume rocker here as well. We can press in the middle in order to be able to mute out. And then we can also change between presets. So if we go to our radio for a second, so we can drop up and down between our presets by moving up and down on the steering wheel there. But one cool thing is that we also would have the flexibility to do a longer press and hold if we wanted to. So if we're on, let's go radio. If we just press and hold, it's gonna let us seek that way instead. So whether we end up seeking that way or whether we just kind of go up and down, like I said, you can also change radio stations using your voice by pressing this button as well. So it's gonna be a matter of preference there. Now along the right hand side of the steering wheel, series of other buttons available. So this is the uh, button in order to turn on the smart cruise control system. So you can see it's saying conditions not met. 
But in order to be able to use it, we have to start driving, we turn it on, and then it's essentially cruise control. So once you've got your set speed, you can either increase or decrease by moving up and down on this side. So we just kind of push up and down this way. Now, if we do have to press the brake ourselves, we can just resume by pressing the middle button there but it's the smart cruise control system. So it's essentially the set it and forget it cruise. So it's an adaptive cruise. So if the car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically gonna break. If they pick up speed, change lanes, whatever the case may be, it'll pick you right back up to your set speed again. This one is going to be for our lane distance. So actually I'm going to see if I can, if I start driving here. Yeah, no, I'm not going fast enough. <laughs> so I'm gonna to have to do a walkthrough on how to use that system. So if you wanna see a live example of how this works, check down in the description below, but it's super straightforward. This one, it's going to show in the cluster screen up there, and it's going to let you know how close or far you're gonna be away from the vehicle in front of you. Four different settings that are gonna be available there. And then this one is our lane follow assist. So we've got lane keep assist in the Kia world, lane follow assist. I love the follow assist because it's essentially self-driving. It's going to pretty much keep you perfectly balanced in your lane as you go. It is a really, really cool system. Next two, so we've got these two buttons that are gonna work in tandem with one another. This one's gonna let us flip through the pages of the cluster screen. This one's gonna let us go up and down and it's gonna work as our okay or our reset button. So. I'm gonna zoom you in a tiny little bit there so you can see what's going on. All right, here we go. So very first page is, back to this one. So that's going to be just our generic settings as well as our attention level. So if we start to veer over too many times without signaling, eventually that's gonna tell us that we should probably take a break. From there, we've also got some settings. So if we press and hold the OK button, it's going to launch up settings on that media screen. So we've got our smart cruise control reaction. So do we want a fast, normal, or slow reaction to the car that's in front of us? Driving convenience settings. Do we want our drive assist? And do we want the vehicle to automatically change speeds just based off of our navigation, which is a really, really useful setting to have. We've got our warning timers. So do we want standard or late timing if we're coming close to potentially hitting a vehicle? We've got our warning sound and haptics as well. So what that means is that whenever we have any sort of our driver assistance settings, so things for pedestrian alerts, collision alerts, things like that, priority means that it's gonna lower all of the other volume in the vehicle so that we can hear what's potentially going on. And it's the same idea when we get into parking priority. We've got driver attention warning, so whether or not we want those to show up, yes or no. The leading vehicle departure is kind of a neat one. So as you start to drive, well, as the car in front of you starts to drive, if you're not moving, it's going to let you know that the leading vehicle in front of you has taken off, which is kind of cool. We've got our forward sensing safety as well. So if the vehicle recognizes a potential collision, it's going to actively assist for us, it can, which means it's gonna break, it's gonna give us a warning, or it's going to do nothing. I always just recommend keeping that safety setting on unless you're taking your car onto the track. From there, we've got lane safety. So it can do, again, a few things. So if it starts to realize that we're going over, left, right, whatever the case may be, it can assist to nudge us into our lane. It can give us a warning or it can do nothing. Blind spot safety, we've got a few different options. So safe exit warning, if we go to open up our door and there's somebody that's in our blind spot, it's going to let us know. So it can actively assist, it can give us a warning or it can do nothing whenever there's a potential obstacle in our way when we go to open the door. So if you don't want to door a cyclist, really, really useful setting to turn on. We've also got our parking safety, so rear cross traffic alert. As we go to back up, if the vehicle recognizes somebody's coming perpendicular, so from the left or right side, it's going to let us know of a potential collision there as well. And then we've also got some camera settings, so we could also look at our parking lines when we're in reverse, so whether or not we want those ones to show up, so it's kind of cool. But if you want a fuller walkthrough on how to use the media screen, check in the description below for that one instead. But moving back out to the cluster screen instead, so page one is done. Page two, we've got our driving info. So we've got a few different options there. So we've got our firstly digital speedometer, which is fantastic. Heck yeah, we've got our tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right, but it is kind of cool that we've also got it available digital. So along the very top is our current drive info. So this is gonna reset every time the car's turned off and then turn back on again, or you can press and hold the button here. So this one, look down, right there. So we're gonna press and hold if we wanna reset that value. Same idea, so since refueling, so once we fill up the tank, it's automatically going to reset that one, or we can just reset it ourselves. 
And then we've also got our total accumulated info. So for the life of the vehicle, however long we've been driving for, until we do a reset there. So you've got a few different options that are available. Next out, we've got our compass. And one interesting thing, so if we look at our map for a second, so we're gonna go map, let's actually find a point of interest icon. Let's look for Tim Hortons. Nice and Canadian of me. Okay, we're going to select the first one, set its destination, close, start guidance. The route guidance will start now. Look at that, right through the cluster screen. So it's not a full map, but at the same time, it still is really useful that we've got that popping up in that middle screen. It gives us two different options available. So we've got 2.1 kilometers to get to our destination with a little arrow telling us where to go. And we've also got our estimated time of arrival, which is kind of cool. From there, cancel the route out and it just defaults back to our compass instead. So it is kind of neat that we've got that setting. Next up, we've also got our tire pressure, which it's not going to show until we actually start driving. So if you're wondering why that's not showing, start driving on the screen and it's going to reset for you there instead. So it's really straightforward. Now we do have a few other things. So I did mention we've got our tachometer and then our speedometer. We've got our current fuel level along the very bottom. And then we've got our engine temperature along the side there. As we go to open up the door, you can also see what doors are currently open, which is kind of cool. And then one other thing to point out, when we turn the vehicle off, you can see we've got our current drive info for the session. Check rear seats happens because the door is open. So it's going to remind us that we've got to check our rear seat. So it's a very, very useful setting from that perspective. We can easily change songs using our voice, but... Mother Mother, Little Hayloft 2 amazing band the sound inside of this is great and this isn't even the upgraded sound system so inside of the forte you've got a four six or an eight speaker configuration with the eight speaker being harbin carden and that's something you're going to find pretty much inside of the gt trim level of the vehicle so we don't have that sound system here but it still sounds really really nice inside of this thing oh i love it oh that's really cool but we've got so many different options there push button start when you get into the manual, you're still gonna be push button start, but you won't have remote start capabilities inside of the vehicle for obvious reasons. All right, next up, taking a peek at the media screen for the Forte. So Forte does technically have two different media screens that are available. It's either gonna be an eight inch or this 10.25 inch media screen. So you're gonna have very similar functionality between the two with a few caveats. So. In this one, we do have factory navigation versus in the smaller screen, we won't. The other thing is that in this screen, it's going to be wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but in the smaller screen, it's wireless. So unfortunately, no wireless solution inside of this 10.25 inch screen as of right now, like fingers crossed, hopefully that comes soon. But let's dive through the media screen. I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know about what's going on because there are actually quite a few things that are available. We're gonna start off just on the generic homepage here. So we've got our homepage. We could, if we want to, swipe across and we've got a whole series of different options that are available, or we can swipe back to the screen instead. So first thing along the very top, this is going to pull up our user profiles. Very useful if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle. So we can set up different drivers very easily. We can change the name profile. We can link our Kia Connect on our cell phone, or we can also delete the profile if we want to. Moving back out, we've got our home icon, which brings us back home. We've got this button, which does three things. So we can turn the display off, we can turn it on, button press here to edit the home icons. So if you want to edit the screen out, we've got that flexibility. So if you use the radio a little bit more, we just press and hold, and we can adjust this however we want to, which I think is fantastic. If you've kind of started playing around with it a little bit too much, and you're like, what did I do? We just hit reset brings this whole screen back to the factory default instead, like just the layout itself. But it is really neat that we've got the flexibility to be able to adjust these things. Back out, other one is going to be our QR code in order to access the owner's manual. So all we're gonna do, press there. On our phone, we're just gonna pull up our camera, scanning the QR code, and then we can just button press there in order to be able to open up our digital owner's manual instead. We still do have the printed one, it's just in the glove box, but if you wanna look at it online, you do have that flexibility, which is nice. Now, other things to point out, we've got our time along the top, current date, and then active data connections, yes, oop, yes or no. 
One cool thing, if we want to change the date time, we just press and then that launches us into this setting instead. We can adjust our daylight savings time, change it out to that military time, so the 24 hour mode instead, if you wanted to go that route. But let's dive through all of the different settings here. Starting off with our map, we've got our main map there. One cool thing is that we can go split screen if we want to, so we can look at our factory navigation as we go up between all of our different presets and things like that. So that is a really useful feature to have. If you don't like it, we can just go full screen and just take advantage of this whole screen, which looks really, really nice. All right, now, a bunch of other things here. We've got our current heading there, so we can kind of adjust out however we want it to look. We've got a few different options there. We can, kill off. Will be at this <laughs> we can kill off our navigation volume if we want to. Navigation priority means that if we're coming to an upcoming turn, it's going to lower our regular audio so that we can hear what's going on. And then we can also increase or decrease that way if we want to. We can also just very easily do a pinch to zoom, and as you can see there, fairly responsive. We also have the auto mode, so it's automatically going to adjust in and out as necessary for us, which is great. From there, we've got a few other things. So we've got our menu button. We've got an active route, which as of right now is nothing's going. We've got some nearby point of interest icons, categories. We can save. We can show traffic information. We can turn the display off. So a few different things, and that's going to be a recurring theme. Like we saw display off in a few other spots. You'll be able to find some different settings in different parts as we go through. But let's search for an address. I did look for a Tim Hortons earlier, so we're just going to press there. And as you can see, we've got two different routes that are available. So we could hit recommended versus alternative if we want to, and it's going to let us know how long in the distance in order to get there. We can start guidance, add a waypoint, and look at route avoidance options as well. That's useful because we can kind of stop, a, we can put a waypoint in between. So if you know you have to maybe stop at the bank before you go to Tim Hortons, you'd have that flexibility. So it's really useful if you're planning a longer trip. We can avoid certain things, so if we want to avoid ferries, toll roads, car lanes, things like that, we would have the flexibility to be able to do it. And then once we do any changes there, we just recalculate, and then it'll recalculate as necessary. We just hit the start guidance. guidance. will start now. Perfect, and there we go. And we've got our total destination there, so you can see what's going on. When I drag and drop this way, it does give me the flexibility to add in a waypoint. We can add in a new destination if we want to that way, or just press map in order to jump back to that main map instead. We can zoom in and out as necessary. If we go there now, we've got some other options. So along the very top, we've got some reroute options or we've got some route options again. So we can see those two routes that we've got. We can just restart. Will start now. We can press menu again in order to go to route, nearby interest icons, things like that. We can cancel the route and then we can also press there in order to either get our arrival time or our remaining time. So what time are we gonna get there, which is in two minutes, or we can look at that route instead. So we've got a few different ways that we can go about it, or just cancel route. And as you can see, route's canceled, and it's that simple. Now, we do have the flexibility, so either through this main screen to press either map or navigation. We can also press either map or navigation along the very bottom there as well, which brings us to the same screens. So let's move into our navigation next. We can search for addresses, we can look at point of interest icons, whether that's gas stations, parking, whatever the case may be. We do have the flexibility of pressing the voice command prompt in order to be able to look at routes and things like that. So if we look at Here active commands, commands, we can say screen, find addresses, go home, previous destinations, and things like that. So it's a very useful setting there. Rather than having to fiddle with the screen, we can just use our voice instead. Next up, previous destinations. Where have we gone to previously? What places have we visited frequently? So we've got some different options there. We can look at Kia dealerships, cancel the route, look at overviews, route options, and things like that. Or we can look at live traffic. We do have the flexibility of plugging in different addresses. So work address, home address, really useful because we could then press the voice command prompt and say, navigate home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be. And it's automatically gonna pull out that address for us. So it's a really, really useful setting. So if you go to multiple destinations all the time, just recommend setting that one up because it's a huge time saver, which is amazing. Moving back home, we've got our phone now. And phone, very straightforward. So we're actually gonna start off on the iPhone side of things. So showing you how to set one of these things up, we're just gonna hit phone. Turn Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. Okay. On your device, select a name that matches vehicle name and on the screen. We're looking for Kia. We can change that name. I'll show you how it's done later. But you can see there, we've got the passcode on this right. 
Okay, do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to hit don't allow for now, but you can see there we've got that. We've got my dial pad, we've got my phone name, we've got what's currently going on with our battery yeah, as well as. Unsuccessful. Yeah. So Please the reason why I said that is because I said no. To try again? No. For so we do have the flexibility if we want to, we can. Let's say if you accidentally hit no, but you wanted to download your contacts, you could delete your phone, add it again, hit yes in order to be able to add it. So it's really straightforward. And same idea, we can go split screen if we wanted to based off of our phone screen there. But I did mention, so we've got our current signal strength and our battery there on top of that. So really straightforward. If we go back to setup now, we've got a few other options. So we've got all of our navigation settings, but the big one is device connections. So device connections, we've got the iPhone that I just set up. If you wanted to, you could have it so that it's strictly for music or you can have it for your phone. So all you do is select one or the other. So we can deselect that and all of a sudden the phone is just gonna be used for music instead. We can add in more devices or we can delete that way if we want. Bluetooth prompts, do we wanna play prompts or do we wanna mute them as they come through? We've got our Bluetooth system info, and this is where we go to update our car, our car name. So we can change it out if we don't want it to be Kia. We can add in our passcode to change it from the very difficult 0000. So definitely recommend changing that to something more challenging. Projection settings are going to be for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I'm curious if they fix the Android Auto bug, because even if we don't have split screen selected, Android Auto always defaulted to split screen. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna come back after I set up CarPlay to show you what this looks like. But that's how you set up a phone, an iPhone specifically inside of the Forte. But let's actually go through and I'm gonna show you how you can set up Apple CarPlay inside of this thing. So all we're gonna do, take our USB cable and there are about a few different USB ports down below. We're just gonna plug it into the middle one. Opposite end of the cable, we're just plugging ourselves in. And so as you can see there, reading USB, do we want to use CarPlay? Do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes. So a few seconds in and we are connected. Boom, and look at that, all across this beautiful media screen. Looks really, really sharp. We've got our home screen there. We've got whatever podcast we're listening to. We can search the phone. We can jump into whatever map application was open last. So if we want to, we can jump into Apple Maps and that brings our default there to Apple Maps instead. So if we press home, we can scroll across, go into Waze, go into Google Maps, press home there, and it's going to default into our Google Maps instead. So you've got a few different options that are available. I did mention we can do a long press and hold on the steering wheel if we wanted to activate our Siri Assistant as well, which is fantastic, or we can just do a press and hold on our phone, which also launches it up through the media screen. Scrolling across, we've got our phone, music, maps, but as you saw there, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze that can all be used through Apple CarPlay, which is amazing. Live One is a radio app. We've got, let's see, audiobooks, we've got podcasts, and so many other things. But these things are all really straightforward to go through, listen to. We can look at your library back home. We can look at our calendar and things like that. So there are a ton of options that are available looking at CarPlay. One cool thing is that we can jump into our general settings. If we go to CarPlay, we can then select the vehicle. We can disallow CarPlay. So if we want to, we can turn it off. If you've connected your phone and you're noticing that CarPlay is not working, check there to see if it's actively connected. If it is, delete the phone from the car, from the vehicle, and then add it again. So we just forget, we add our phone back in, and it should automatically connect. But we can customize. So on the home screen, let's say if you love listening to podcasts and you are a fan of Waze, oh, uh, press and hold drag it to the top and as you saw there just hot dynamic presses and it just it updates it for us which is amazing if you accidentally delete something it shows up at the bottom of the screen here but it removes it from apple carplay if you've done too much you just reset brings it right back to the factory default layout instead so really really straightforward i did promise you one thing so if you go back to setup device connections phone projection we can't do anything until we disconnect but phone projection, CarPlay, use split screen, and we're gonna go home, plug back in, and watch this. We're gonna go into CarPlay, and then as you can see here, we do have our split screen. We can go up and down now between subscreens if we want to. Now, we could 
adjust this way if we want to. So AM, FM, Series, XM, etc. We could also adjust this way. So it looks like that little bug is fixed where it didn't actually let you launch into any of these options, but it is interesting because we need to, as you can see there, have an active source in one of our presets. But once we've done that, we can then rotate this way in order to be able to listen to the radio while we're also connected to CarPlay. So we've got Google Maps while we've got CarPlay going. All of this, or sorry, we've got CarPlay going with Google Maps while we've also got our radio playing. So that's how you get that done. So very, very straightforward to do. But I mean, look at that, really nice. If we wanted to get that full screen back, we just go back into setup, device connections, unplug, CarPlay, full screen instead, and you're set to go. But I mean, you saw it there, really, really straightforward to be able to add a phone to this vehicle. Hey, next up, setting up an Android is the exact same process. So if you weren't on this screen, all we have to do is just get back into device connections again. So we just go setup, device connections, device connections here. We can add in a new phone or delete that other one. I'm going to keep this one connected to show you something neat. From your device in order to search. So on your device, select the key is there. Do we want to pair up? Pins match. There we go. So we are now connected there, but as you can see, we've got one, so we've just connected this device, but at the same time, it's showing the iPhone gets connection priority. So what we're gonna do, just press, drag it, and then if we want to, we could connect up to this one instead. It's disconnecting, and it's connecting now to this phone in order to be able to make phone calls. But as you can see, we still have the iPhone that has that priority connection in order to be able to listen to music. So this is really cool because you can have- Okay, so this is cool because we've got one phone we're connected to, let's say, for our phone, and then we can disable this if we want to. So we've got one phone for audio, one phone for the phone instead in order to make calls. So it's really cool that we've got that available as an option. If we wanted to delete a device, we just select, delete, yes. I mean, three seconds there and it's deleted. So it's really straightforward. But I mean, if we want to, we can just go back home, jump back into our phone, keypad messages and things like that so very straightforward and then very similar to the iphone side of things we also have the flexibility of setting up android auto in this screen it is a wired connection so we take our usb cable plug it in down below opposite end of the cable we're just plugging ourselves in and i'm gonna have to unlock so unlock to continue okay next All right, it's just taking its sweet time connecting. There we go. Allow access to messages, etc. So there we go. And three, two, one, we are fully connected. Now, I don't know if you remember, but I did have full screen Android Auto enabled, but it's still doing a split screen. So it looks like we still don't have the full screen map capabilities in Android Auto as of right now. It is useful because we are using, I mean, we've got our podcast kind of split this way, but I really wish we could utilize the whole screen in order to stretch the maps across. So it's like, fingers crossed, but I mean, as of right now, this is as good as the split screen is going to get, unfortunately. But as you can see there, we've got Google Maps. We've got this as part of what's going on with our podcast there. We can press the Google Maps side of things if we want to. Go for look at traffic, satellite, if we want to look at different route options and things like that as well. So we've got that as an option. We can X out. And then we've got a series of different buttons along the side here. So we could press this if we want to activate our Google Assistant. We can also press and hold on the steering wheel. So long press to activate that way. We've got any available notifications. We've got what's currently going on for media suggestions. We could also listen to our podcast this way and then it just split screens to jump Google Maps over to the other side. Or we could push this button along the very top left to get back to the main screen. Now one thing, this phone has Waze installed and it looks like we don't have Waze available as an option here, unfortunately. So I'm like, fingers crossed, hopefully that also gets fixed here, but we've at least got Google Maps. And then depending on the version of the vehicle you're in, we also do have the fle flexibility of looking at factory navigation instead. So, I mean, we've got quite a few different options available there. But, I mean, it is nice. We can easily adjust what's going on with our podcast, look at settings, go to our maps. We can easily make phone calls and things like that through that screen. So, whether you decide to use Android Auto, Apple CarPlay or not, matter of preference. I personally love using Google Maps in Waze, so that would typically be my go-to anyways. But that's how we set up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay inside the vehicle. All right, so we've got our phone projection. But if we go into oh, our setup, 
device connections, phone projection. I did tell you, so it did have full, uh, full screen enabled, but for whatever reason, it's just not letting us go true full screen. So we're very close to it. Unfortunately, not there as of yet, but I mean, as you saw there, it's easy enough to connect, setting up our phones and things like that. We can go back home. We can look at our phone projection, which that's the Android Auto, Auto Apple CarPlay. It's grayed out because there's nothing connected. We can jump into our setup, device connections, delete, that, delete, yes. And three, two, one, we're deleted. So it's that easy setting up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and connecting a phone inside of the Forte. All right, from here, let's jump back to the home screen and a ton of other options. So we've already seen our phone and phone projection. We do have voice memos. So if you want to, you can record a memo right onto the car. And we've got our climate control settings so we can see what our current settings are. We don't have the flexibility of adjusting anything directly through the screen, unfortunately. But as we adjust, so we go through one way versus the other. It does give us that flexibility. We can sync up back to our driver's side. We can also see what's going on as we adjust our fan speed, whether we have AC going, yes, no, etc. So we've at least got a few options there. We can recirculate when we use our windshield wiper fluid. We can auto dehumidify and then also have it auto defog for us too, which is kind of nice. We've got valet mode, which we do need a few things. So we do need to have our Blue Link system set up in order for valet mode to work. And I mean, obviously it's not going to be set up because I'm in a dealership vehicle right now. So valet mode, it's just a matter of downloading the Kia Connect app, and then you can connect that way in order to lock things out. So valet can't look through all of your different settings. Quiet mode is going to essentially quiet everything down. So if you've got sleeping kids, it essentially makes sure that we don't go past a certain volume. We've got our HD radio, so we can see what's going on with our traffic, radar, fuel prices. We've got our radio here, which again, we can either get through there or we can press the radio button there in order to get to what's going on with our radio. Jump between AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. We can also kind of do a drag and drop here if we want to. We can also add in another station. We can see what's going on with our current station list. So if you're new to an area, not sure what you can listen to, really useful to go here. And then we can look through all of the available stations. And then you're just gonna select whatever stations you want. So let's go through and add a few in. So two good stations, 94.9, We can go through Sirius XM and then look through our presets as well. So we just added two of them in, but it is really straightforward. We can easily reorder by doing a drag and drop. We can also delete presets as well. So we just select whatever ones we want to delete. Delete, yes, and it's to remove the preset. So it is really nice. We've got that available as an option. Moving back, we do have a ton of other things to look at as well. So if we press the button along the top, we can scan Sirius XM channels. We can delete presets, reorder, and things like that as well. We can jump between different songs that way. We could also enter a channel this way. So if we wanted to listen to a channel instead, we could go that route. So tons of different options that are available, but it is so straightforward to use all at the same time there. Next up, our media. So we've got our FM, AM, Sirius XM, Sounds of Nature. We've got Bluetooth audio. So if we were hooked up to either, you know, an Android, iPhone, a USB stick, things like that, we would have the flexibility of jumping between all of these other sources. It is nice that we've got so many options available here though. Moving into our setup next, ton of other options. We've got our vehicle settings, driver assistance. It is neat. So it tells us essentially everything that the car can do. So we've got, oh, that's actually really cool. I never even noticed that before that we could push everything here. So we could look at more drivers, convenience settings, forward safety settings. That's really neat. I honestly, I didn't even know that we could jump in and do all of these unique things. That's really cool. So let's drive through. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know here. Driving convenience, so we've got our highway drive assist. Big one is gonna be the highway speed change. So if the vehicle recognizes that there's something going on at the speed, navigation data is automatically gonna lower the speed for you. We've got, ooh, one that we missed. We've got our smart cruise control, what's going on there. So essentially looking at the leading car in front of us, do we want it to have a fast, normal, or a slower reaction? We've got our warning timers. So do we wanna have a late or a generic, or a quicker timer? our warning and haptic sounds. So really useful to have the setting turned on unless you're going onto the track, but priorities for safety, for parking. So what's going to happen is if we've got our parking assist, so a view, so if we're backing up and then there's a potential collision behind us, it's going to essentially blast the sound to let us know of a potential collision. Priority means that it's gonna lower our regular audio in order to be able to let us know of something going on behind us. 
driver attention warning. This one is kind of neat because if you're stopped and let's say you're not paying attention, lose focus for a second and the car in front of you takes off, it's going to automatically let you know that you should probably start driving. And then inattentive warning, if we start to veer over too many times, it's going to tell us that we should probably take a break. We've got forward safety, so if the vehicle recognizes a potential collision, it's going to automatically brake. It can give us a warning or it can do nothing. Lane safety, so if, same thing. If we start to veer over without signaling, it's going to gently nudge us back into our lane. It's going to give us a warning or it'll do nothing. Blind spot safety, so we've got our safe exit warning. So if it recognizes there's a vehicle in the blind spot of the vehicle, it's going to let us know we've got a warning or nothing will happen. We've got our park safety, so we've got our rear cross traffic alert. So as we go to back up, if it recognizes that there's a vehicle behind us, it's automatically going to let us know. So if somebody's coming from the left or the right side, it's gonna say, hey, potential collision going on. And then we can also adjust what's going on with some different settings here. So we've got our rear view parking lines. So as we're in reverse, do we want these parking lines showing up? Yes or no. And then we've also got our extended rear view on top of that. So even after we shift to drive, it'll keep the backup camera on for a second. We've got all of our different camera settings. So if we want to adjust the brightness for nighttime, for daytime, adjust the contrast and things like that, we've got that flexibility. Moving back from there, that's all for driver assistance. We've got some options for our cluster now. So we can adjust the illumination. If we want to adjust the brightness, we can adjust the blue light filter. We can use a blue light as well. Really useful for later on at night. So we're gonna go more warm and we want it automatically happening. So useful to get rid of eye strain at night. We can have it automatically come on or schedule when we want it to happen. Or we can just have nothing happen. Some options for camera settings. Do we want to show our extended rear view? We've got our display settings there as well. And I did mention, so a lot of these things, you're going to see them repeated a few different spaces. We've got our service interval. So are we coming up for service? Whether that's for different, different distance, days, we can reset. We've got our content selection. So what do we want showing in our cluster? Do we want the wiper lights, traffic signals, icy road warnings? Do we want welcome sounds playing when we turn the car on or off as well? Moving back, we've also got climate settings so we can recirculate, auto ventilate. And again, we saw that we can have, we can schedule the ventilation and then for our defog, defrost, etc. Different options for lights, so our turn signal. So when we go to turn, you can hear that it's three there. We can have it at one flash, three flashes, five or seven. We can have a welcome light showing on the outside there as we approach at night. We can have our headlight delay. So as we go to lock the vehicle, do we want our headlights to stay on? And then we've got our high beam assist. So really useful because if the vehicle recognizes that there's somebody oncoming, it's going to automatically dim the high beams for you so you're not blinding people in front of you. So really, really useful setting there. Some different options for the door. Do we want to have the vehicle lock the doors when we go to shift or when we start driving away? Do we want to have them unlock when we park the vehicle, when we turn the vehicle off, or do we never just want the doors to automatically unlock? To press unlock on the door, our smart trunk is really useful. So with smart trunk, if we've got our key fob on us, we walk away for a few seconds, the, the trunk is automatically going to open. Let's hop outside and I'll show you how that process works. Now, once we do have the setting enabled in that media screen, all we have to do is make sure the vehicle's locked and it has to be locked for at least 10 to 15 seconds or so. And you need to be about 10 to 15 meters away. So vehicle's locked. I'm just gonna go for a quick walk. All right, and after you've waited that 10 to 15 seconds or so, you've gone shopping, you've got your groceries. You're just gonna walk up to the back end of the vehicle here you hear beeping. <laughs> so it's very straightforward to use. I mean, I don't have the key fob on me. In my, oh, I've got it in my back pocket, but it is really nice. Like, yeah, we've got our trunk release down here. We've got the release on the inside, but having the flexibility to use these smart lift gates so that you don't even need to worry about pulling the fob out of your pocket, I think is absolutely brilliant. I love that the Forte has that available as an option. So that is really cool. We've also got the flexibility of using our key fob in order to control the windows so we can roll the windows down. So let me show you how that process works. What we're gonna do here, 
on the actual fob itself, we can see that we've got a series of different buttons that are available on the front end there. So let me just kind of focus you in. We've got our lock button, unlock button, etc. We're just going to press the unlock button twice, but on the second button press, we're going to hold. Now, one thing, if we release the unlock button, it's going to stop it. So watch what happens here. We're going to go one, two, and hold. We can release, it stops. We press again. Back down it goes. So that's for the driver's side window. So again, really, really cool setting. We've got that as an option. And we've got our convenient settings from there. Rear occupant alert. When we go to drive, we turn the vehicle off. It's going to tell us in our cluster screen that you should probably take a look at the back seats. Now we can also disable our wireless charger if we want to. From there, we've got a series of different navigation settings, and we've seen some of these ones, but we can see what's going on with our vehicle speed in the cluster. We've got our traffic info, traffic colors. Do we want to show different point of interest icons in the cluster, or in the media screen, I should say. For guidance, do we want to have what type of guidance? Detailed, do we want to show speed limits? Do we want to have our interval distance or cumulative distance? So you can see there, it's how much do we have left versus how far have we gone. Moving back from here, we've also got navigation voice at the end of the destination, border crossing. Do we want to show our route overview? Oh, do we want to show our route overview when we're stopped? And then we've also got our previous destinations. So we can save them or if we have this deselected, our previous, previous destinations are just automatically going to delete, which is great. Some different options for maps. So we can adjust either 3D. So if we want to go 2D, 2D head up, etc we can have it auto scale, which means it's automatically going to zoom in and out, just depending on how close we are to our destination. And we've got different map modes. So whether we want to change up the font size to a larger or a smaller font, we can change up the color of the map as well, which is kind of neat. So let's say if we went black map, we've got a dark setting there instead. So it is kind of cool that we've got that available as an option. And from here, so we go back to our map, We've got different colors that are available there. We've got our symbol color, so whatever color we want to, we can kind of adjust it out. We've also got our map auto scale. So when we're at different speeds, how far out is the map going to be zoomed in or out? So we've got the flexibility of adjusting this out if we want to for each individual setting. Moving back, we've got our navigation features. We can auto reset the map automatically. Do we want to return to the map automatically if we go off screen? showing user data so if we've got our kia vehicle we've had before we can import all of our data as necessary and we've got our current gps location so if you're lost you need to call caa AAA, whatever the case may be you can just give them your gps location that way if you want to and that's the base of our navigation settings moving into our sound now so we've got a few different options there our speed dependent volume what's going to happen is it's going to automatically adjust the volume if we're going faster or slower position is going to be so do we want to have it focusing on us, everybody, etc. So you've got that option. Our tone, do we want to change out our treble, mid-range, or bass? Something like that is going to give you a pretty good sound. We've got our guidance volumes as well. So you can adjust literally everything. How loud do you want the beep to be? Do you want to turn the beep off completely? Do we want to have alerts going, navigation, things like that? Like so many different options. I love that we can customize all of these small things. We've got our navigation voice guidance as well. Do we want to, and again, we've seen this one before. Do we want think different things showing up? We've got our navigation alerts and a few other things. Radio noise, do we want to have the vehicle automatically reduce the noise for us? And then series of driver assistance settings, which again, we've already seen some of those ones. We've already seen device connections, user profiles we've already seen voice recognition we've got a few different settings there so we've got reduce the number of prompts which essentially is more or less like an advanced mode so if we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel we just won't get as many prompts if we've got this one enabled from there we've got our screen layout which we've got a few different options so if you wanted to have different themes for our screen we've got that flexibility we've got our screen saver so when we turn the display off do we want to have nothing and then from there, so do we want a digital clock? So we turn the display off and it shows a digital clock, or do we want an analog clock with a different watch face? So we've got that available as an option. Turn the display off and you can see there. So you've got a few different options what's showing up. 
and then split screen. So when we are in our split screen mode, what's going to show up? Do we want to have our weather showing up, compass, etc.? And which order do we want them showing up in? So it's kind of neat that we've got, we've got that available as an option. And from there, we've got our display, which we've already seen that, so illumination. Do we want our blue light filter or our camera settings adjusted? Do we want to adjust different buttons? And we've got a few different buttons that we can use. So when we press the custom button, so custom button right here, what do we want that one to do? Do we want it to connect to our phone, phone projection, look at our HD radio, etc.? We've got two different buttons on the steering wheel, and same idea. When we press it, what do we want to have happen? So we can adjust what goes on there. Our mode button on the steering wheel, do we want it changing between all of our active sources? So it's a matter of preference, what's happening with these buttons. Do we want it changing presets, stations, frequency, etc. when we press up and down on our steering wheel button too. So we've got so many options available there. We've got our Kia Connect, which I have to feature and roll, which I can't do because this is an unsold unit. We've got our software info and update so we can see what software version we're on. We can, we can automatically update there if we want to. We've got our system information so we can see what's going on with our current vehicle storage our user manual, what's new, modem information. We've already seen what's going on with our date and time, so we can easily adjust out our day and time if we want to. We can change out our language to either English, French, Spanish, or Korean. And we've got our keyboard, so whether we want QWERTY or whether we want default keyboards, units, do we want to have kilometers, Celsius or Fahrenheit, kilometers, liters, liters per hundred, etc. Our media options, do we want to have the radio off when we start the vehicle up? Do we want to continue to play the media while the vehicle's turned off? And then do we want to have any sort of change notifications when we change out our media? Then we can also reset everything. So we can reset the driver profile if we want to, so delete driver profile one, or we can reset everything and bring the vehicle right back to the factory default. From there, a few more things. Kia Connect, which again, we do need to have the Kia app on our phone and we just need to activate there to be able to do things like remote start, etc. We've got our notifications. And we've also got our user manual there as well. So I know there are quite a few things that are available here, tons of different options, but I gotta show you this one. Sounds of nature. If you wanna just relax. So if you're a bigger fan of like ambient noises as you go, we've got the flexibility to kind of be able to adjust this kind of on the fly, which is really, really cool. So we've got all of our ambient noises. We've got all of our presets there, AM, FM, Sirius XM. We've got a few different options for climate control, whether that's single, dual zone, whatever the case may be, is gonna depend on the model of the vehicle you're in, but we can easily adjust out, different for the driver passenger, sync up the passenger to whatever the driver's side is. We can have the vehicle determine what the temperature is or turn the whole thing off as well. From there, we can have our front or rear windshield defrosters going. Do we want to adjust what's going on with our fan speed? Having it go to our windshield face feet, some sort of combination of the above, and then our air circulation button on top of that. And moving down from there. A few other things to point out. So, some things you might not be able to see from your vantage point, but maybe, let's put you in a drive for a second. We've got a wireless charge pad right here. So if you've got a phone that supports wireless charging, drop it on the pad, you can see the light goes on, and that means that we are currently wirelessly charging. So it is nice that we've got that available as an option. Down from there, we've got a few different power points. So we've got 12 volt power point and then two USB ports. So USB for data, so if we're hooking an Android Auto Apple CarPlay, and then USB strictly for charging. So we've got a few different options that are available there. And moving down a little bit more. So a few other things, heated, ventilated seats as an option. So it's going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in, but I love that this car has the option for heated and ventilated first row seats, and that's for the driver, as well as for the passenger seat as well, which is great. We've also got our heated steering wheel, different drive modes that are available. So we've got normal, sport versus smart mode, all pops up through the cluster screen. And then we've also got our camera button, so we can push this in order to see, actually I'm gonna pop you up, Bam! What's going on with our rear view? So we can see what's going on back there, which is kind of nice. And you can also see that we've got our split screen off to the one side there. Press the camera button again in order to make it go away. All right, and we've got a few other buttons there. So this is our electronic parking brake. So we can pull up in order to turn it on. We hit our brake and push down in order to turn it off. And then we've got our auto hold setting. One of the big benefits of the auto hold setting is that let's say if we're in gear, 
we can take our foot off the brake and the car is not going to move, which is fantastic. So really, really good safety setting. Shifter is actually really nice. It grips really nicely in the hand. We've got re park reverse neutral drive into a sport mode. One cool thing, we can just drop down to drive, smack it over in order to go into our manual mode instead. So we can adjust gears out this way if we wanted to, rather than just letting the vehicle determine what gear we're in. So definitely a nice thing. And then we also do have a little armrest, which has a decent amount of space to it. I'm about wrist deep there. So you can fit a decent amount of space in there. Moving up overhead, we've only got the option for a manual dimming rear view mirror. Still nice that that's available as an option though. Our tow mode, SOS mode. We've got our sunglasses holder, our cabin lights. We've also got, I pointed it out earlier. Uh, oh, of course, I gotta turn the car on. <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> we also do have a nice sunroof there. So single button press. Oh, that is bright. We're overexposed in a half right now. Huh? It's so bright. There we go. Oh, that's better. <laughs> that was crazy bright. But it is nice that we've got that center there available as an option. We can fully open it up if we want to. We can also just vent this thing out if we want to create a nice cross breeze. From there, we've got a visor with a vanity mirror built in. We've got a light over top little business card holder, and this thing's gonna extend out to block all of the sun, which is fantastic. But overall features, styling-wise, this is really nice, especially compared to some older vehicles. And I gotta see what's going on with that second row space. So let's see what's going on back there. Well, <laughs> so looking at the second row space of the vehicle, this thing is actually fairly spacious. It's kind of nice. So me sitting like fully, fully upright, my head is like just touching the back here. If I kind of move forward a tiny little bit, I've got like half an inch of head space there. So, I mean, I'm six feet tall. I still have a decent amount of knee space though and a good amount of foot space. It's just up overhead. Like I'm grazing like a tiny little bit when I'm all the way back. But I mean, at the same time, if I had to get in this car, I wouldn't have an issue with it. Now, I'm six feet tall, fairly broad shoulders. So could you fit three full-size versions of me? It would be tight for the person stuck in the middle there, but not impossible all at the same time. So if you've got a younger family, you know, friends that are shorter, whatever the case may be, probably comfortably be able to sit in these seats, no problem. One cool thing, we do have all of our anchor points and we've got our top tether points and things like that. So if you've got front-facing, rear-facing child seats, you're not going to have an issue inside of this thing whatsoever. But feature and styling-wise, it is really cool. We've got that same glossy highlight along the door. We do have our window buttons, and we've got the option for second-row heated seats, which this one has. Now, with the heated seats, strictly going to be for the outboard. That middle seat is never going to be heated inside of this thing, but it is still really cool. We've got that available as an option. Up overhead, we've got our assist handle, driver passenger side. We just have a clothing hook along the driver's side. We've got a little light overhead there as well. And then moving down, we've got a little mesh pocket in behind the passenger seat, little vent control, and then we've got another USB port back there as well. It's kind of cool. Now, looking at the seats themselves, so series of options available. I mean, the seat itself is actually, it's really comfortable. Like I wouldn't mind actually going on distance trips, with me kind of like leaning back a little bit. It's not too shabby, but the seats are very comfortable. I will give a key of that. These are really nice seats. I love it. It's really cool. But we do have some cup holders back here. So we don't have any sort of release. We've just got to kind of jam our fingers in and we've got to pull down. And when we do, we've got two little cup holders here. So it is nice. We've got that available as an option. We've got our bottle holders along the door. So these little cup holders are a pretty nice touch. It would be nice if we had something to pull in order to make it easier rather than just jamming our fingers into somewhere in order to be able to pull down as necessary. Filling up fuel inside of the Forte is also very straightforward. And one thing I actually love is that it's a locked cap. So we've got to go inside in order to be able to unlock. It's locked and it's also capped all at the same time, which is amazing. So really the idea of fuel theft, pretty much out the door. Like, could people still crank it open? Yeah, but at the same time, at least it's locked. It's like first level of deterrent. But looking at fuel quality inside of the Forte, it doesn't matter if you're in the two liter or the 1.6 liter, 
all you need to use inside of this thing is just your regular 87 gas. So regular fuel is all you need to use. Depending on where you are in the world, that might be slightly different, but as long as you're using that 87, because I know in Europe you're like 95 is like your minimum. So as long as you're hitting that 87 unleaded, you're good to go. But if you want to use a premium, you could. It's just not necessary inside of this thing. The back end styling of the Forte is pretty nice. A little interesting because if we look at the rear bumper there, it's kind of neat because they kind of did like these little faux cutouts, almost as if they were going for dual tip exhaust, but inside of the anything but the GT, just a single tip exhaust, so just right on our right side there. But like I said, base styling inside of this is kind of cool. We've got this nice light that wraps all the way around the back. It kind of almost reminds me like Dodge-esque. It's kind of cool. We've got these nice lights down below. And then one interesting thing, we've got this nice little deck lid spoiler right along the very back there. So it just adds a tiny touch of some additional design elements. We've got our Kia badge along the back, Forte along the side, and then depending on the trim level, we've got a different badge along the bottom right hand side on top of that, which is kind of cool. But it's got overall styling in the back end here, very, very different from Fortes that I'm used to. Oh, cargo dimensions for the Forte are showing up there. So the trunk actually does have a decent amount of space to it, especially looking at a vehicle this size. Now, one thing, you actually can't fold the back row seats down unless you're in the trunk. So we've got a little release there. We can just pull in order to release. And then we can easily just drop down from there. So very straightforward to do. I do wish we had a release in the second seat. Unfortunately, not available there as an option. But I mean, you saw that easy enough to be able to open this thing up. And when you do, you've got even more depth. So it is nice that we've got that available there as an option. Now in the boot of the vehicle, there's nothing really back here. Nothing off to the right, nothing off to the left, other than the releases for the second row seats. We've got this cover that technically is removable. No spare tire, but it might be there depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. We've got our goop and necessary equipment off to the side there as well. So, I mean, if you do kind of puncture a tire, we can at least temporarily seal it up. You do have Kia roadside assistance on top of that if you need it. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2023 Kia Forte. What did you think? I love that Kia still has a sedan available as an option. I wish that we had the manual transmission still in Canada though, but we at least have the sedan, which is really nice. Uh, what did you think? If you have any questions, comments, drop it in the comment section below and let me know. But if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, share it with your social networks if you think someone can find this useful. And until I see you next time, take care.